And we're live. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello there. Um, welcome back to God is in the House um, in the sunroom at Carberry, Manitoba. And uh, as we do our, our uh, get-together, um, come as you are. Um, because God accepts us for who we are and where we're at. And so today we just want to say um, welcome again. And there's, you know, there's just so much that the Lord... Um, the Lord would have for his people. And I just want to say, may, may he bless you richly. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, I've got a declaration, and, and we'll just kind of, you can take this and personalize it for yourself as we go along. Um, but this is, thank you to our, um, our friend and apostle, Vincent Poole. From Houston. So uh, we, uh, I just, I borrowed this from him. And we want to declare, there and, and just go ahead and personalize it. So today, by the grace of God, my arrival, your arrival at all places will break barriers. We declare this. Mm -hmm. We declare this in the heavens. We declare mm -hmm. it even right now in this in this space. Mm -hmm. This heavens that we're in, the second heavens can be well warned, and definitely the God of heaven and earth, He's already, you know, put His stamp on this. Amen. And so. By the grace of God, my arrival and your arrival at all places will break barriers. My miracle and your miracle will break protocols. Mm -hmm. My testimony, your testimony, shall last forever. I shall be and you shall be the most preferred anywhere I go or anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Power to survive every storm of life shall rest upon me and it shall rest upon you. And the name of the Lord shall be glorified in my life and in your life. Amen. Because how else do we survive storms if we did not have Jesus Amen. and his power and his might? The blood of Jesus Christ will speak for me and it will speak for you as well. And the word of God will work for me and it will work for you. His word is powerful and his blood speaks the greater word. The Almighty God will perfect all that concerns me and all that concerns you. I will prosper. You will prosper. The work of my hands, the work of your hands will prosper. I will Amen. prosper in health. You will prosper in health. Amen. My soul will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your soul will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And whatever trap, because believe you me, there's lots of traps that enemies like to to put out there, you know, for us to step into and fall into. Whatever trap is sent set against me or against you, Almighty God will make a way for, of escape for me. He will make a way of escape for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree that your, your heavens, the Father has opened his heavens over us all. God is giving this miracle with speed. And everything, everything is turning around for good. So all that the enemy has meant for harm is being turned around for good. Why? Because we love our God. Amen. Because we love the Lord. And because we love him. And because he loves us even more so. Then everything that has meant to harm us is being turned around for our good. And the Lord God, even in Jeremiah, has said, you know, I... <laughs> My plans for you are for good and not for evil, for hope and for a future. Amen. And so there is hope. There is a future of hope. There is good. And the Lord has meant good in, for each and every one of us in our lives. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I just say, Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, may the good of all that needs to come out of all these storms that are going on around us, may your good now, may we see it very quickly, Lord. I say, let's see that quickly because you are a God of action. You aren't a God who just sits by and watches and twiddles your thumbs. But Lord, you are a God of action. So Lord, we expect to see you acting on behalf of your people. We expect to see you acting to still the storms. We expect to see storms being stilled because of Jesus Christ and the power of his, his, his Father, and the power of Holy Spirit. Storms that are messing up people's lives. We say no to that now in the name of Jesus so that God will be glorified. May the Lord God Almighty be glorified in the midst of every storm. Amen. 
that he will be lifted high. And when we lift up the name of Jesus and we lift him high, then all, then all, will, <coughs> we lift high the name of Jesus so that all may come to know him. We lift high the name of the Lord God. All men shall be drawn. All men, all women, all children shall be drawn to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because we are lifting high the name of Jesus. Be high and lifted up in our midst, Lord God. Be high and lifted up in our midst. And we say glory, glory and honor and praise to our King. And so we, we just say, let the King of glory enter in. The King of glory, let him enter into your home. Where God is in your house. And where if you if you got God, then you got God in your house. And he wants to even fill up your place even more. His presence, his glory. He just wants to give you more. So we bless you now and then as we go forward with conversation around the table here, with, with speaking the word of God and, and with what Holy Spirit would want to say and do. We just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes to you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So before you uh, turn it back to me, mm. Leslie's we but we got t-shirts on. It says "Every Life Counts." Can you? Does it show that? <laughs> Every life counts. See, every life counts. So, yeah. <laughs> Did you know that every? <laughs> yeah, every life counts. And uh, wow, I'm just. Uh, Excited! This particular uh, T-shirt, um, when we ministered in, in British Columbia, uh, with prison ministry for you know twenty-five plus years, um, some of the fruit that came out of there. This this was this is from an evangelist named Cody. His last name I anyway he he was passing through here in Manitoba doing evangelistic meetings last last year, and uh, one of the fr friends of our ministry, Deb, uh, bought us these. And bought, got the book and got everything uh, of Cody's. And I said, well, we know Cody. He was he was part of our prison ministry and uh, when way back when and when we were in British Columbia. So, you know, seed does come out of uh, rocky places. <laughs> Every life counts. You, 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 just when you think, uh, you know, how could anything good uh, come out of uh, Nazareth? Uh, you know, like, you know, even in the Bible, you know, like people had their opinion you know, the Jesus of Nazareth. How, you know, how could anything good come out of Nazareth? Gee, that just shows you how uh, how in the know most of people are when they're looking at things from face value. Or, uh, you know, I don't, I've been to Nazareth, uh, and I want you to know there's different, uh, Nazareth has its own community. It's only, it's, it's, uh, it's, how could I say, it's a uh, style of people. And uh, the type of people there, and maybe they just don't blend with well with a lot of the other socialites and and the and, and another individual. So you've got two you got different communities in different cities that uh, don't necessarily get along very well <laughs> because of opinions. You know, opinion opinions are can get us into trouble. <laughs> Amen. If if you remember the uh, the teaching that I gave on the cold J formula, cold J C O L D slash J, you know, it's it's like taking a thermometer, and I can stick it in your belly button, mm. <laughs> and and by sticking it in your belly button, uh, I, I'm being facetious here i'm being i'm trying to make you laugh i'm trying to tickle your giggly pin down there have you got a giggly pin anywhere near your uh, your belly button see you're topping your hands honey and they can hear that in san francisco mm -hmm. they'll think it's a it's another earthquake so don't tap too hard please mm -hmm. <laughs> they're having a hard enough time down there without any tremors coming from canada i'm gonna get a whack here i i, I, I deserve it but i'll, I'll anyway <laughs> So, Cole J. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, this formula, Cole J, is, you know, we all know the fruits of the Spirit, and we all know 
all the wonderful things of the Ruach HaKadosh and the Holy Spirit. What about the counterfeit? Is there a counterfeit spirit of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Is there? You know, in 1 John chapter uh, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 9 is a great read. Uh, and I think what we're going to do right here is we're going to read 1 John chapter 4, verses 1, probably to 9, but we're going to focus on 6. Because you need to come awake to some of the things that are happening around us. And those things that are happening around us operate in a spirit of error. Mm -hmm. Error. Some of those things that are in a spirit of error are walking in a very dark, dark, dark evil. Mm -hmm. First John 4. Did, I, did I misquote? Well, first John, what was that? Chapter, uh, ch first John chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. Yeah. So when we go there, <laughs> you're trying to find it, First John? Uh, well, you know, First John chapter 4, here I am. I got it. First John chapter 4, verses uh, 1 to 9. But we're, um, we're, we're going to get into... I don't know. It, it, when you get... Have you ever done something that you got to get your hands dirty and do it like... Uh, if you got ever had a sink that was plugged and you got to get in there and get all the stuff out the, that's plugging the sink, ever ever had to do that? Yep. You know, uh, sometimes there's hair in there, sometimes there's uh, earrings, sometimes there's all kinds of stuff that goes down the sink, right? That could, could be worse. Could be worse. Could be worse. I don't know, <laughs> but you have to dig down and you've got to do some surgery. Well, we're going to do some surgery today. Now, if you have a spirit of error in you today, you know, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, this Holy Spirit dwells in us. And you might say, well, that, that, that's really great. But I want you to know there's always a conflict going on between good and evil. And I want you to know between the Holy Spirit or the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth or the spirit of sonship, and you are sons and daughters of the Most High, are coming against the spirit of, hmm, it talks about error. Now that spirit of error could be something that we talked about before in regard, as far as uh, an orphan spirit or other things. But we'll get into that. And we're going to stick to, the, to our formula, the cold J formula, C, O, L, D, slash J. And the, and, the, and the C that stands... Um, that's that is that is this uh how could i say this counterfeit spirit or the opposite spirit of the holy spirit it's called a critical spirit the c stands for criticism are you critical about anything are do you have a crit uh, is there any criticism happening right now because of this covid19 is there any crisis in your life right now that is bringing some criticism towards government, towards family members, towards anything that might be causing you some discomfort, right? Are you, are you, is, is your mouth and your tongue in control? You know, sometimes, sometimes when the word gets out, you got to catch it and you got to try to put it back. Oh, too bad. It's already out. You know, when the, when the barn doors open and the horse starts a running, hard to catch that horse. Anybody ever try to catch, I'm going to get a whack again. Uh, Leslie had to do that, and she fell off the horse. And she couldn't catch the horse. I'm going to get a whack. <laughs> I guess I should really do this because you keep saying so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Keep asking right. for it. Yeah, All right. You keep saying you're going to get it. Well, you know, you speak with you know, you get what you speak, right? He's ignoring it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get a kiss. I'm going to get a kiss. Go. I'm going to get a kiss. I'm yeah, going to get a kiss. Much better. Okay. 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 So can you read? Can you start in First John chapter four? And let's read it down to six, okay? Let's dissect this right now. Yeah. So this is out of the voice translation, uh, 1 John 4, verses 1 to 6. And it says, My loved ones, I warn you, do not trust every spirit. Instead, examine them fully to determine if they come from God, because the corrupt world is filled with the voices of many false prophets. Here is how you know God's spirit. If a spirit affirms the truth that Jesus, the anointed, our liberating king, has come in human flesh, 
then that spirit is from God. If a spirit does not affirm the true nature of Jesus the anointed, then that spirit does not come from God and is, in fact, the spirit of the Antichrist. You have heard about it coming. In fact, it is already active in the world. My children, you have come from God and you have conquered these spirits because the one who lives in you is greater than the one who lives in in this world. But they are of this world and they articulate the views of the corrupt world. Let's stop. Let's do a little segue from this corrupt. You want to just talk a little about the corrupt world? Does COVID 19 stand for critical or, 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 or corrupt or um, mm -hmm. criticism or uh, the religious? I mean, really. I, I'm, I'm just saying, just take it from there. And, and then come back. What's, is there anything on, that you can speak, or anybody else around the table, that's talking in verse 3 here, um, that every spirit does not, con does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and is not God. Okay, and then you, you had mentioned which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are, you are of God, little children. Okay, that's verse four. So can you read again three and four uh, from, and then just, let's just talk about that. Let's dissect three and four. Okay, so if a spirit does not affirm the true nature of Jesus the anointed, then that spirit does not come from God and is in fact the spirit of the Antichrist. You have heard about its coming. In fact, it is already active in this world. My children, you have come from God and have conquered these spirits because the one who lives within you is greater than the one in this world. Hmm. Is there any uh, is there any antichrist antichrist spirit out there ro roaming around? <laughs> you know, like how far is Minneapolis from us? Maybe. 5 hours? 5 6 6? You know, there's there's a lot of difficulty happening 5 6 hours away. And all across the south of the border. You know? Well, yeah, like like from where we live to five, six hours, you could drive, we could go west and drive five, six hours, and we're already in Regina. You know, we're, you know, we're, it's just one province, right? And below us is uh, another province called uh, Minnesota. <laughs> Above us. <laughs> yeah. Above us. So much for your geography. Yeah, state, I know, United States. <laughs> anyway. I'm just saying from five or six hours going one north, south, east, or west, we cannot drive two hours this way before we hit the U.S. border. You know? So from one nation to another, could there be, could there be a, along that line, could there be a, a spirit that's different when you cross the line going into another nation as opposed to where we're at, or from one province to another province, or from one city to a city, from lo one location to another. C can there be a difference in, re in regards to a spirit of different spirits? Yes, definitely. I've experienced it. Okay, explain. Coming, uh, but better than my story is uh, missionary friends of mine from Haiti a few years back. Oh. They were uh, coming up through the U.S., they crossed the border into Canada and they were barely 10 minutes on this side of the border and they had to pull over and stop. The spirit of the Lord, or the, whatever the change was, they were so overcome with it in weeping and gratitude for being in Canada and out of the U.S., they had to stop on the side of the road. It was that serious. Yeah. And I've, I've experienced it on a smaller scale myself, uh, visiting in the U.S. and coming back to Canada, and there was just, wow, I'm home. I actually felt it coming home from Fiji. As much as I liked Fiji, when we landed in Vancouver, I'm home. Mm. I, I, there was a feel, you could tell the difference. Yeah. And that's what... I want. I, I just want you to come alive in the understanding of there are different spirits in different locations, mm -hmm. different nations, different problems. Uh, when we were in Jamaica, there was a place called Maypen, uh, and 
you know, uh, and May Pen is where you know uh, Faith Clinic Ministries. We had we had our the, the school there by you know uh, Pastor uh, Egg, Isaac Isaac Egbowali. Uh, he was a fellow from Nigeria that went there and set up a school and it was awesome school and stuff. But did you know that the roosters there had no idea what the time was? They just they just they were totally disorientated. They just the roosters just all the animals. They they just went. They were totally dysfunctional the whole day. Amen. The whole day, the the roosters were were uh, were crowing, mm -hmm. not first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. and it was because the witchcraft and everything that was in May, uh, mm -hmm. around Maypen, because there was a stronghold of witchcraft over the area. Now you could travel, uh, and and the area was like hit by a. a uh, and the people from Jamaica know this, the area of, of Mayfair, you could draw a circle around it and uh, hardly anything could grow in that area. Just a, on the other side, it, everything was fruitful. You, bananas can grow anywhere. And the animals were bananas can grow anywhere. But they had a hard time growing in Maypen because it, it, the, there was such a, a dryness in the spirit. There was such a... a disorder. There disorder so much, in everything. There yeah. was so much disorder, yes. They're like principalities and powers, but in yep. different... Yep. Yeah, but in areas. cities. Geographical areas. In the, like so, yeah. so in, in saying this, we need to be awake with this COVID-19, with all these different things. In Seattle, like, when, when you lived in British Columbia, like, Seattle's only, like, what, three hours? It was three-hour drive. Can you imagine from Vancouver to Seattle, three hours difference, and the community of humanity decided to take over the police force and the police station? I've seen that on movies that were hypothetical from the movies. That happened. Yeah. That's happening. What do you do? You call that anarchy? Do you, what, do, what would yeah. you call that? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Uh, you know, so that is a spirit of anarchy and lawlessness. We talked about some of these things last night, last week, in, uh, on Saturday, as far as the uh, all the different types of prisons. And one of the things that we talked about was in, in Genesis chapter four, I think it was fourteen or something like that, uh, in regards to the vagabond spirit. In other words, when uh, Cain killed Abel, you know, all, something happened in regards. To Cain, do you remember what happened? What did God do? Marked him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think he could wipe off the mark? <laughs> yeah. Do you think he could run away from the mark of that sin? Mm -hmm. Do you do you, do you think for any? Do you know where the Canaanite, Canaanites came from? It wasn't Bud Lights. They didn't come from a, some advertisement from a beer commercial. You know, they, they're the Canaanites. They were the mockers of God. They're the ones that took the mountain areas. And I, I want you to know, in the Canaanites, you know, God, you know, God is pursuing and chasing Cain, who was a marked person, who brought the spirit of the vagabond spirit or the wandering spirit, as it's called. And this is in the destruction to bring disorder into every place where it puts its foot. To disrupt and destroy families. <laughs> you understand? Break up churches. Anything that will bring, uh, anything that would minimize the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ today, but anything that would take away and minimize the power of the Father in heaven, God in heaven. He, he was. They were mocked. They mocked God openly and took their arms like this. The Canaanites. And how long did they last? Quite a while. God gave him a lot of time to repent. How, how much time do you think God's going to give all these COVID-19 things around the world? He wants them to be saved. Mm -hmm. people, yeah. mm -hmm. That means there's going to be a lot of destruction. A lot. That means you as a son and daughter of the Most High. How are you going to be able to handle such anarchy or vagabond spirit or wandering spirit in your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone face to face to a, a demon? Have you? Do you think it might happen? You're going to be ready for it? The guys in Africa, you know, it happens all the time. The guys in uh, Pakistan, you know. The guys in Fiji, you know. The, guy, the guys in... Uh, uh, in the, it, 
it it hasn't been that way here in North America. Well, not so long. Not not so often. Oh, you know what I'm obvious. saying? But it's it's going to. What are you it's going to do? Are you? Right? Yeah, you can't run away from it. You've got to stand up against it in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood. You can't run away from a spirit of evil. It's only the spirit of truth that's going to take it out. And the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. And the power of the Ruach HaKadosh that's inside you. And the word and the breath of God, Adonai Elohim. So you better start your training and you better get ready for your training for the trenches. And get your boots on. Get your, get your warring boots on for training for the trenches. And that's what we're going to be doing here. That's what we're doing here is God is in the house. And we've been doing it for about three months now. Training for the trenches. And uh, uh, as God is in the house. Because you need to be able. not. The Lord says, occupy until I return. But it also means to defend. It also means to advance the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean to retreat. Are you retreating? Are you hiding? Are you pulling back into a, a, a closet, a black box? Why? If you are, you need to check what's happening in your thinking process because a spirit of error, a spirit of, uh, pardon me? Fear. Fear. fear is, it, no. is, is perfect fear, what? Perfect love casts out fear. So what's the opposite of fear? Faith. So the enemy's doing everything... It can, through all these different situations, through humanity, through civil strife, through uh, economic woes, uh, through relationships, uh, being stuck in the same house for a long time. Like uh, Lorraine, she's happy to get out here now. She's, she, you know, she, I want you to know she's already beat up her shadow and the shadow says, Take, go, let's, go to, let's go to a race. <laughs> <laughs> she's laughing down there. Well... <sighs> I hope you're understanding that this COVID-19 is only the start of what we need to prepare ourselves for. Um, the Prince of Persia used to sit over where? Babylon. Do you think it's sitting over there now? Do you think the Prince of Persia has moved around? Do you think it's positioned itself in different locations around the, the globe? And, and 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 it's other you know uh, you, you know when when Daniel had to pray for twenty one days, you know uh, the archangel Michael said we were fighting for you there Daniel. We, it took us twenty one days. Not only did we have to take on the prince of Persia, but we also had to take on Greece. We had to you know. Do you understand how the warfare that's going on out there? And it's and it's and it's all over. Like it's it's like the globe has become so small, and the second heaven. Is, is where all the spirits are, and the third heaven is where heaven is, okay? I'm trying to... Like the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, you know, the kingdom of heaven. So from the kingdom of heaven going through the second heaven, which is the spiritual uh, area that has been given the dominion for the prince of the air, right? And then the prince of the air is trying to do everything he can to take over the kingdom of this world. Mm-hmm. He really, he, he really thought he had the kingdom of this world. He really thought he had you guys and me and everybody else. But no, they had a plan and they executed their plan and strategy worked and the blood kicked him out. <laughs> Jesus went down to hell and took the keys of hell and death from Satan, from Lucifer, and he had to bow down to him because Lucifer knew who Jesus was. Because in Luke 10, 19, it says, I saw him fall like lightning. From heaven. In Luke 10, 19. Do you think that was happening when the, Jesus was just doing his discipleship thing and training, training the 70 at that time? That was at the beginning of time. That was, that was, that was, that's, that's when Abba Father was face to face with Lucifer and said, take, leave the kingdom of heaven and take one third of your demons with you. That's way back when. You with me? And Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Elohim, the God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, had the plan, and, they, and, and the plan of strategic plan has been put together, and we are part of the reason for the success of the Holy Spirit to go forth now from Pentecost to multiply and go forward to take out, the, to take out this uh, very 
difficult, critical spirit. Okay? When I say critical spirit, spirit of error, spirit, mm. spirit of evil. Because it's manifesting itself on the kingdom of this, in the king, small kingdom, kingdom of this world. But the Lord is empowering his sons and daughters, not children. He's empowering his sons and daughters to come to a, to a place of spiritual maturity to take on those things that are, we are being attacked from. It, the guys in Africa, the guys in India, they've been doing it for a long time. It's, it, it, it's just something they know how to do. Here in North America, training for the trenches. You cannot be lukewarm. You cannot be the church of Laodicea here because it's going to end up that um, you're going to compromise the blood of Jesus because you're going to be operating in so much fear and you're, and you're going to forget your first love and your faith that you walk in. And God's going to shake you up so that you come into a place to understanding that. What is your first love? Who is your, who is your love? Are you going to love the kingdom of this world more than the kingdom of Jesus? Of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so... When we look at uh, what's happening here in 1 John chapter 4, it says the Antichrist is walking around. Well, in John 10.10, 10, it says, it talks about there's, there's, there's a, a roaring lion that wants to seek. What? What, is, what does that lion want to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants to what? Like a roaring lion is not a roaring lion. He's like a roaring lion. That's the key word. <clears throat> he's like a roaring lion and he only has teeth if you give it to him. Mm. Other than that, he's got no teeth because you have, you have his teeth through the power of who you are as a son and daughter of the Most High. Mm. That's what I'm trying to get at. And he wants to kill and destroy and do a lot of different things. But you can stand in the gap and you, like just like Jesus, Yahweh, stood in the gap when... Uh, at the first Passover, Yahweh stood in the gap and the destroyer went over because the blood was on the post. The same thing happened, you know, uh, at the Passover uh, when Jesus was just prior to his crucifixion, he cruci when he was crucified. He, he said, it's, it, in, in, he says, it's my blood. I am so excited about this particular Passover because I am about to suffer. And in this suffering, it's my, new, it's my blood is going to be the new covenant that's mm -hmm. going to give you the new covenant that you can walk in that covenant of strength and power. Not in the old, but in the new. The crossover to the new. Now, at this particular Pentecost, in this, where everybody was locked down in their houses, well, this is where we've been able to come into a greater place and strength of who we are in the Holy Spirit and come into a, a, a better place of, of, uh, uh, of taking on a spirit of error. Because God is in the house. How long can a spirit of error hide in your house when you're continuing to worship and pray and do all those things that, that in, in that relationship and covenant with God? It's very difficult for it to hide. It's going to manifest itself. And what you see that's happening in... Uh, in, in different cities and different parts of uh, United States and Canada and uh, uh, you know every life counts you know it doesn't matter what what the color of the skin is it's all we're all red underneath mm -hmm. we all bleed the same we all need to come into that place of unconditional love unconditional forgiveness unmeasured acceptance and to walk in covenant relationship it's the devil that, and 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 the Antichrist spirit that's causing this division. And it's the same thing that the Canaanites did in the division of that mocking spirit. When they mocked God, they created a division. Okay, they wanted to create a division between themselves and they wanted to call it humanity. And they built the first city and that first city that uh, Cain built, he built it for his son, Enosh. And they called the city Enoch. Enosh, depending how you spell it, on the top of a mountain so that, that they can have their fortified city and keep themselves protected from God. Hmm. Yeah. That's why, that's why it's so important for us to take the high ground. The enemy wants the high ground. Hmm. We've got to take the high ground. And I want you to know when you do your studies, 
there's a certain spirit that, that, and there's a certain tribe that built Babylon. There's a certain spirit and there's a certain tribe that built, what did, they wanted to build stairs to go to heaven. What do you call that? Tower of Babel. Are we talking about? Yeah, the tower. It's it's Enoch that it's Enoch that built that. Mm -hmm. Enoch. 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 You know, it, it, my pronunciation sometimes like Enosh or Enoch or whatever. But it all came from the Canaanites. It came from the wandering spirit. It came from the that that uh, that critical spirit, that mocking spirit, that they wanted to build fortified cities to have this human type of thing so that they could control the humans, control everything else, and and everybody would fear them more than they would fear God. Oh, that's... Does that, is that happening today? Sounds familiar. Does that sound familiar? Mm. But that's the way it was then. Mm. So how are you going to have the revelation and understanding that that you're not in a lock up or lock down mm. the enemy is trying to lock is trying to put you into a prison and keep you in fear and you and you've got to get your training for the trenches and put your war boots on mm. put and, and, and your sword and put on the armor of god like we've been training because he wants to be like a roaring lion but he will he will seek and kill and destroy those who do. my people perish for a lack of knowledge I wonder if that actually applies today. Mm. Does that apply today? My people perish for lack of... Do they love the Lord their God with all their heart, their soul, and their mind? Do they love their neighbor <laughs> as themselves? Is that from the tree of good and evil? The tree of knowledge? Or is that from the tree of life and resurrection life? What is it... Where is the remnant going to come from? Where is the remnant going to come from out of this crisis? Mm -hmm. It's going to come out of those who are so on fire with the Holy Spirit and fire right now. Mm -hmm. this, this is the time for the seed, that seed, to let it arise in you to come into a place of strength. Because the enemy wants to dampen your fire and and he wants to make your seed um impotent Lemon. he wants to make your seed not important but <laughs> impotent in other words he wants to sterilize you he doesn't want you to be able to multiply nothing only your fleshly desires not the kingdom or the seed or the principle of the multiplication that the Father in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice and the empowerment of the promise of the Holy Spirit to come now and multiply through us. Do you understand you got to fan the flame? God is fanning the flame, but what part do we have to take in this? We cannot have a critical spirit. Mm -hmm. Cole J, we cannot have a critical spirit. O stands for my opinion is only the right one. How many opinions out there right now about COVID-19? How many opinions out right there right now you have to do this, you have to do that? How many are asking God what to do? No, they're asking all the tree of good and evil and all the knowledge on what opinion is best for us to do and, and consulting governments, consulting, I'm not saying doctors and all that. I'm just saying, where is the source of our faith in this thing? And where is our opinion? And then, the, and then, cold. C O L. L stands for legalism. Is there any religious or legalism going on right now? Mm. Huh? Amen. In the last three months? Oh my goodness! I'll let you. I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll let the religious spirit and the and the legalistic situations. Uh, what? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Can you put handcuffs on the Holy Spirit? Mm -mm. Can you gag the Holy Spirit? Mm. How many times did they put Peter in prison and all of a sudden the angels, he's, he's out? When the Holy Spirit, you, you, you cannot put the Holy Spirit in a prison, you cannot put the Holy Spirit in a box, and you cannot put the Holy Spirit into your doctrine and to tell the Holy Spirit what to do. 
<laughs> right now, this is a new thing that God is doing, and he is declaring it. Do you not see the new thing that I'm doing, says the Lord? I am doing a new thing. Mm. I, I, the Lord said, hold on to the former things that I have given you the foundation on. Hold on to those former things of the breath of God, of the foundation, and hold on to those things of the Ruach, of what we, of what we, the Ruach Hakadosh of the Holy Spirit, in regards to all those things that the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, hold on to those real strong. Hold on to the gifts of the Spirit. Hold on to them. Hold on to the fivefold ministry or the ecclesia. Hold on to that. We need to hold on to those foundations. But we need to hold on to the Spirit of Truth. There's so much on the spirit of truth. It says in John 4, uh, verses uh, 22, 20 to 22 or 23, it says, worship the Lord thy God, okay? And, the, and it says, the Father will seek. The, let's read that one. Uh, John. John, uh, John 4, uh, 22 and 23, I think. On the spirit of truth. We're, gonna, we're, we're still not finished on this uh, first uh, first John chapter four because we haven't got to six yet. Okay, so okay, all right. So Here what, we, what, are, what are we doing? We're going John chapter four, okay. verses twenty two, twenty three, and anything else in there because it, it, it's about liberty in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Just jump in. So let's see. Uh, okay. Verse twenty-two. It says, and this is Jesus talking. He says, "Your people don't really know the one they worship." And this is from the Passion Translation. Yeah. Um, your people don't really know the one they worship. We Jews worship out of our experience. It's from the Jews that salvation is made available. From here on, worshiping the Father, so from that time on, from the time of Jesus, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. For God is a spirit, and he longs to have sincere worshipers who worship and adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. Yes, so we need to worship in a, in, a, in spirit and in truth. And God says, I am spirit. I am this, I, I am I am, I am that spirit and in truth. Um, how can you worship God and you're not in the right spirit? Hmm. What, what do you call that? <laughs> Is there a possibility if you are worshiping in the wrong spirit that well, if something is wrong, then it's considered to be an error, right? Okay. So, all I'm saying is that sometimes some people worship the worship, and they worship the worship leader, they worship the 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 denomination, or they worship the pastor, they worship the congregation, they worship somebody's the, up on a pedestal. Somebody is up on a pes when they put somebody up on a pedestal. Oh my goodness. Is that going to create a spirit of error and a possibility in a division or a potential difficulty with that individual? Hmm. Because he, what, what is that person operating on? Or operating in? Do you, do you not... What is it when you come and you covet somebody else's gift? What do you call that? Jealous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So if if you're not if you are worshiping in a wrong spirit, maybe what you would be doing is that worship is only touching those things in your flesh mm -hmm. that need healing or need or need stimulus, let's say, okay? But it's not getting to the spirit inside because you're blocking it because what you're, you're you're operating in a spirit of air or there may be an orphan spirit or there may be some other things in between that are that's blocking the real spirit of truth right to the right right to the heart of god inside you so the filters are plugged as well the filters saying. are being the filters are plugged yeah and that's where repentance 
and and having that repenting of those things is, is an important thing because I, I can re, I can remember uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, the, during those renewals and revivals back then, there uh, there were some interesting different worship songs that came out, but very seldom was the word of Jesus in it. Mm. You know, you know, but there but at the same time it was it was a lot of it was based on flesh. Because there was a lot of hurting people, mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm just I'm just making, uh, and but one of one of the, I'm, 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 the one of the worship songs that was being sung is that um, they 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 wanted <laughs> the spirit of truth is important to be healed in the heart, mm -hmm. right? If, if if you're only being healed in the flesh, it's like a band aid; it gets ripped off, and you go back into the same cycle. Is all I'm trying to say. You know, like uh, it's it. As soon as the trigger comes again, those individuals would be back in drugs or doing drugs or doing whatever, and they'd be they, they'd be caught in this cycle, and they didn't really get to the source of the pain, or right down to the, like to the spirit of truth. But they would block it because they did they they'd only allow so much of the truth in. Uh, in regards to the full acceptance of what who, what the Lord was doing in their life. It was Go ahead. Yeah. I just have a, a couple of questions. I know when Leslie was reading from the Passion Version, it used the word sincere. I know King James and others use true or true. So I think sometimes you can be sincere, but sincerely so, wrong. Right? Yes, and might not be necessarily be, be the absolute truth. Right, right. And then I know often, I know you'll go further than that, but sometimes you get stuck on worship. Mm -hmm. And worship is like a praise and a worship. Of, what did what did it mean in a broader sense than just you know just singing? I think it incorporates much more than just you know our verbal singing to him. Mm -hmm. Right. It's our living. It's our life. It's yes. Our, so how it's, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's a lifestyle, and uh, absolutely, and that the Father seeks those who are in spirit and in truth. Who will who worship are, him in spirit, and spirit and truth right. that are in that lifestyle of that. Mm -hmm. So, so that type of worship, then worshiping Him in spirit and truth, isn't necessarily as you're saying, singing songs yeah. of, of praise. Right. On. But you know it. But worshiping is just even sitting very quietly before Him. That's right. And in His presence, mm -hmm. and just how much, just being together with the one that you love, mm -hmm. and the one who loves you. And whether you say anything or you don't, you know, is that kind of right? Or sometimes I think, you know, I, I love worship. I love. Yes. I don't sing, but I love to enter in it and to worship. Yep. But it's like sometimes that worship is elevated. Like we don't have this, or not this great worship, or really right. led us into the presence of God. Right. So it's a tool. Yes. But we don't need it to enter His presence. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know, we come from the outer courts into the inner courts, like you say, just sitting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, and that's yeah. where you get the truth, but you can enter in, mm -hmm. just you and him together. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the difference between being in that place of maturity, as a son and daughter, and the, and and children. Children, mm -hmm. you know, lose their focus at times. Not to say that they can't enter in the same. I, when we were in Cuba, the the kids there could worship in spirit and truth. Man, the tears that were coming down their face were real. Mm -hmm. You know. They just being in the presence. they were just worship and the tear and being in that the tears are just coming down and they were just they were totally consumed. Um, there's no way the parents could tell. Okay, kids, cry now. <laughs> you know, and, and we're in, and we're in you know in in Cuba or in other nations and and to see the heart of that worship coming out of the individual that is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about performance. I'm not talking, uh, I'm not, sometimes there's a performance related thing, either, but we have to come into that place of entering in as you were saying, you know, uh, Maria, but you can cry with Jesus by yourself mm -hmm. in your home and worship him in spirit and in truth. Or you can do it at a don't forsake the assemblies at a beautiful con conference or, or or a worship thing where the, corporately it's so beautiful. It doesn't matter 
about the number of people or the venue or whatever. It's about the heart. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and, right. and if the leader of that worship, if the leaders of that worship are pure and they really want that purity to pour to, through to uh, those people in the congregation or out there, mm -hmm. they're going to make sure that there's no spirit of error uh, in the worship team. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes there might be a conflict or this or type of thing. And what certain, they'll say, okay, uh, we want you to sit, sit this one out and you just, you just worship tonight mm -hmm. instead of being part of the worship team. We want you to be part of the worship team, mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, corporately, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not about you. Amen. It's, it's about the worshiping God. It's not, mm -hmm. we can do this without you. Hmm. Okay. God can do it without us. Mm -hmm. But he wants to do it with us. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if there is something that is so causing such a, that's that cold J thing. If there's something critical inside you, or if your opinion is wrong, or if there's legalism. And the other part of the CLD is, is D is debate. If, 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 you, if you are at a place where you're not submitted to anybody, and you're going to debate, 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 uh, you're, you're always, you always want to be right, that's not right. <laughs> it's not right. You've got, you got to be submitted. And then there's the dash, C-O-L-D dash J. Well, a dash is interesting because it's, a, you know, did you know a, a dash is part, is it part of the English language? A dash? Certainly, punctuation. Is it a punctuation? So it's part of it. So, so what does dash mean? Is, is the cold being connected to the J when I put a dash there? Yes. D d does the dash have any importance in regards to what the cold is speaking to the J? I expect so. Yeah, so collectively, the C-O-L-D dash is creating judgment on the situation. So cold slot dash J is that whatever's going on in you, the dash or the, uh, let's call it the spirit of error or whatever it may be, is creating a judgment on whatever your opinion is on everybody else, including yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? But that that's... The spirit of truth. Okay, so let's go back to First John uh, ch chapter uh, four and and in verses five and six. And it says they. We already looked at four, and it says you are of God, little children. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than who is in the world. Oh, okay. I don't, what, did, what is what did four say? In does anybody else have anything different in four? He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Um, well, uh, little children, you can be certain that you belong to God and have conquered them. For the one who is living in you is far greater than the one who is in the world. Do you believe that? Amen. Yeah. Do you really believe that? Like Jesus in me is greater than all the other... I think you're just saying that. I want you to. Uh, I want you to tell me in, in certain words that you actually believe that. I happen to know that. Oh, you know it. You just I read it. Because you read it, does that mean you know it? Because I've read it. Because I've experienced the truth of this. Hmm. His word has spoken truth, and when I've tested that truth, Amen. When I've tested that truth and say, okay, is this for real? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still have a little peripheral vision here. Um, then, yeah, the proof that Jesus Christ in me is greater than all the demonic forces Amen. out there comes forth because authority and power. Amen. Authority and power of Jesus Christ proves himself every single time. Amen. If we will not back away, if we will not retreat, we stand for what we know is truth. Mm. We speak the truth. <laughs> but he so is yes, I happen to know that. Yeah. And you live it. <laughs> Most days. Okay, anybody else on that? <laughs> hey, you got I, any? I go with what Leslie says. <laughs> uh, you go what? She's going with what I'm saying. I go with Leslie says, ditto. Okay. I, I, you know, I challenge. But we know just from what yeah. we've been, yeah. He, he, he who is great, who is in you, is greater than who is in the world. 
So Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells in us mm -hmm. is greater than anything in the world. And the world is the kingdom of this world. Or the second kingdom. Well, no, not the kingdom of this. I'm talking second about. Second heaven is what. Second heaven. Okay. Which is. Okay. You understand that second heaven. You have authority over the devil and all his horde and the principalities and the powers. He said, no, I don't. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus went to the cross. Amen. It was a period. Mm. Done. Finished. It is finished. Amen. Was it a question mark after that? It is finished? Question mark? Not. No. Period. It's done. It's finished. Okay. So I challenged Leslie there and she came back just the way the fire in her should. <laughs> Are you? Uh, some of you have never seen that before. And I don't know if I'll ever do it again. So keep the tape. <laughs> That's our anniversary on the 6th of July coming up. I don't, I got to do some, you I do, I, got, I got to behave myself and buy her. You didn't, you didn't get her stick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way she, <laughs> Momo, did you hear that slam? Did you hear that thing slam in uh, mm -hmm. Liberia? Did you hear that? Did you hear the sword come down and go boom? What about uh, Pastor Jack? Did you hear it in Fiji? What about you, Pastor Kumar in India? Did you hear this? Did you hear the sword come down slam? No, this is who I am. You shall not pass. Amen. I am going forward in who I am. I know who I am. And, I, and the fact that I know who I am, I, it is greater than any, in, in the world. It says in the whole world. Yeah. Is there anything that you can add to the whole world? <laughs> I'm just saying there, 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 there's, it's not a comma after it's like something else you can, that's it cold J's this dash and the J is the judgment okay so if you're judging people based on this COVID-19 stop it and every, every single one of us has to do that internal check thoughts motivations of the heart it not one of us sitting around this table or anywhere exactly. else is you know is not is exempt we, every single one so it's not just a you know it's not just you you and you it's like every single one of us needs to do to, to do a regular daily checkup okay and make sure that we aren't in a place of what are our, what's our thinking mm. And why is that? And where does this come from? What is the prejudice in my own heart that, that I think like this? And then if I'm passing judgment, what gives me the right? Okay. Because mm -hmm. I don't have the right to judge, albeit we all think we know mm -hmm. something better than, and that there, there it comes back to pride. Amen. So it's like, no. Okay, it's good. We're, we're, we're doing good here. So, come yeah. on back. Mm -hmm. Bring the old barn do door back here. And that's good. So, okay. Barn door. <laughs> It says in verse 5, they are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. So everything that's happening out there right now in social media, media, government, you can plug it into verse 5. They are of the world. Yeah. Therefore yeah. they speak as the world, the kingdom of this world. Not the kingdom of... You need to speak as... As the kingdom of heaven. You need to speak the voice of the Father. You need to speak as it says in Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. It says the Father speaks in the language of the Son. You need to speak the language of the Holy Spirit. And not compromise it. Amen. You need to speak as the son and daughters of the Most High. As the remnant. Because anybody that's, that is operating in a spirit of error, it, it's all about us. It's in the air. It's like, it's, it's like that spirit of air it, it, it is, is like dust getting caught in the um, filters. Now, we're, we're going to be going to 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 3 to 5. 
when does it actually become a sin when you when you think about when you when a thought comes in is it a, is it a sin when you think or is it a sin when you actually do it you actually you actually enter into that sin right yeah once you bring it forth to, to action to action so the spirit of air are you with me mm -hmm. the spirit of air wants to confuse or dampen the spirit of truth bring the light down so that you are operating in a different spirit mm -hmm. so that you can actually take it to the that place of sin interesting eh okay so it, yeah. huh if if you allow it to if you allow it to so okay so it says therefore they it speaks as the world and as the world hears as the world hears hears them what does it say you got anything different there as the world hears them verse 5 as the world hears them. Who's the world right now? Who, how is the world responding to everything that is being spoken to them based on oh, everything that we talked about of the confusion of the cold, uh, the cold dash J? In other words, this is the formula. Cold dash J is the formula of the spirit of evil or the spirit of air that wants to operate in you. So you have to know when to shut it down. So if C stands for critical spirit, what's the opposite of a critical spirit? What's the opposite of a critical spirit? Anybody? Well, loving, encouraging, blessing. To encourage and build up. Yeah. Oh, blessing to bless others right. instead of cursing them. Amen. Yeah. So it, you can stop the critical spirit by saying, no, I am not going to curse you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to criticize you. I am going to pray for you and I'm going to bless you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make that choice. So that means that the cold J formula, that the C is no longer operating in criticism, it's operating in the spirit of truth, which is going to bless people. Mm -hmm. Now, opinion, what's the opposite of opinion? Truth. Okay, so if you're going to, oper mm -hmm. if you're going to operate in truth, in the spirit of truth, mm -hmm. you're no longer walk operating in air because you're going to be speaking the voice of the Father. Mm -hmm. You're going to be speaking the voice of Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. You're going to be speaking the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And opinion it becomes the humanistic side ah. versus be opinion because when we speak from perspective of truth and and the, from the third heaven where the kingdom you know yeah. where our king resides in the greater realm if we speak from that realm not the humanistic then there is no opinion as far as because he loves everybody the same and he doesn't throw out opinions. Okay. okay. But that's the human factor. That mm -hmm. does and that's opinion. verse 5 again when it says, they are of the world, therefore they speak, they speak as the world. Right. So the world is listening and actually the world would prefer to be in a place of the cold J yeah. formula because they would sooner be in a place of crisis than be in a place of calmness. You know, I'm, I'm going to, or blessing people. And it says, and the world hears them. In other words, the bad news sells newspapers. In other words, the world hears and the world enters and they want more of the social media and they want more of this. They, want, they don't want to hear the blessing part. They want to hear what's happening with riots today. So How many that, people died today? So that's the language they speak. Yes. Right? Yes. Because if the father says to speak the language of his son or speak the language of his son, but this of the world... This is the language of the world. <laughs> yeah. And so if we chime in to speak from the worldly perspective and articulating the spirit of the world, then, um, then that it's the, that's the language we're speaking and not the language of heaven. Amen. Excuse me. Uh -oh. Did you hear that? Did you hear what she was speaking? She was speaking the language of heaven. Those are the kind of lips I want to kiss. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you see, when I kiss lips like that, they're... I, I know, right? That's I, it. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> we didn't rehearse this. This is kind of cool. No like, she's blushing. <laughs> do you not think? Do you not think the light? What she was articulating. There's some joy down at the other end of the table. Maybe I should go down here and do some kissing down here. No. Okay. <laughs> Just stay where you are. Exactly. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> that would that would be the wrong spirit. That's the wrong That's spirit. Great. Okay. That would be the wrong <laughs> Okay. Did everybody get what verse five is? Of course, the language of the world. Now, if somebody is speaking the language of heaven and the language of the spirit of truth, it's kind of nice. Actually, when I kissed her lips, it almost tastes like honey. As it's, it's song, Songs of Solomon, uh, chapter 4. Mm, the sweetness of honey. The fragrance of that. You know. <laughs> Go back. She's... Come on. There's the joy of the... Do you not think the joy of the Lord is a wonderful thing? That was just one kiss. One kiss under the anointing. <laughs> one kiss under the anointing. And she's just... We, <laughs> Look the way she's blushing. Fifty years we've been kissing. Fifty, fifty. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. One thought. <laughs> I know you're only joking about coming down. The I know. I know. Yeah. I, but isn't that kind of a a metaphor? How? Oh, God really moved. Oh, this was such a beautiful thing here. Oh, I'm going to do it here and here and here. Uh. And we haven't listened to. What's appropriate, how God wants to move us, right? Uh -huh. How many places in That's scripture where it talks about how the God in heaven, the Father, wants to kiss you? Mm -hmm. Right. And do you not think if he kissed your lips that you, your breath and your lips and what you would speak for the rest of your life, being blown into the same as Adam, would be mm -hmm. a life changing thing? Maybe. That would be the heavenly language, or the, yes, heaven, the yes. language of heaven, yeah. versus what you were going to do is the language of this world. No, but what I did with you. No, that's fine. Yeah. But, but, but gotcha, I'm saying, eh? <laughs> but I'm saying, if it was to be extended <laughs> upwards. Yeah. Yeah. Then it would be going into error, right? Like that's it, right. We can start then in truth. Be, that's right? right. Yes, yes. Then it's like taking that same application. Right. And, God's not in it. That's yeah, great. and you know, that's, some that's exactly some people right. may take that and say, "Well, I'm going to, go, I'm the pastor now. I'm going to go kiss all my people in my church tomorrow no, because be because I I've got this word from God that, that from that guy, that crazy guy in Carberry, that mm -hmm. you know about the kiss. No, because that, you interpreted it wrong. That's the spirit of error, and that's your flesh interpreting it wrong. How many things have been interpreted incorrectly in the last two thousand years? Mm -hmm. Look at baptism in water. People were were crucified at the and burnt at the stake just for being baptized in water. It, 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 wrong. So here, I, I'm just saying with this COVID nineteen, it, every life counts. Every every life counts. And how we speak, and if we're speaking in the language of the Father, if we're speaking in the language of heaven, if we're speaking in the language of uh, Yeshua Hamashiach, you know. If you heard his voice and he looked into your eyes and he said, follow me. And every corpuscle, everything mm -hmm. in your body jumped. Mm -hmm. Would you be moved to follow him? Mm -hmm. I've heard his voice mm -hmm. audibly. I know what it sounds like. I know what happened to my body. I imagine, can you imagine the disciples back then and the people that would have heard his voice? Mm -hmm. Oh! Yes, it would make a difference. That's what we need to be, be as the remnant mm -hmm. in regards to knowing if, in, in Philippians 3.10 that you know him. You know his voice. You, you know him in every part. That you know him in the fellowship of his suffering, in the fellowship of his communion. He was excited uh, in, in, in both in Mark and Luke in regards to the last Passover. And, and the first couple, I can give you the scriptures on that. I think it's uh, Mark chapter uh, 12, verse 22, and, and Luke chapter 14. I, I'll, I, I'm doing it by memory, but uh, 22 is 20, anyway. Jesus was absolutely excited about this, about, about Passover. 
And he was saying, I'm excited about my suffering to come. And about the new covenant that we are going to have. The new blood, the new covenant, that so we can speak as him. Amen. The promise can speak through us as him. Mm -hmm. And we will be speaking the kingdom of heaven through the Father's voice. Not the world's. And it says, verse 6, and it says, okay, uh, verse 5 says, uh, they are of the world, therefore they speak as the world, and the world hears them. So your ears should not be turned to or tuned in to what the world is doing. You need to be tuned into heaven. Okay, that's your choice. Verse 6, we are of God. I don't know what you got in the Passion. Verse 6, we, we. Who? The ecclesia. The we there is the ecclesia. The way, the first, the, the first church. We. Do you understand? Uh, first John, the, the, in, in the first uh, 70, to, to about 70 to 72 AD, a lot of these scriptures were, were and these books were written by, uh, by the... Uh, by the apostles and so on. Um, we is the ecclesia. We are the beloved. In other words, the C that was the criticism and what's the opposite of that criticism was the blessing. And it says God wants to bless the beloved. What about the Beatitudes? Blessed are those, what? All the blessing, the blessing, the blessing. That's, that's what we are. Blessed. And the O, there's no opinion because your opinion is never right. Hmm. Do you understand? Your, your opinion from the, for the, from the kingdom of this world is not right. Hmm. It can only be correct through the tree of what? Life. Hmm. Not through the tree of good and evil and knowledge. Hmm. And if you're operating on that, hmm. you're in the wrong route. Hmm. We are of God, and he who knows God hears us. Okay, he who knows God, that you know him... In what? In the power of the resurrection, as it says in Philippians 3.10, that you know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering in, 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 in Passover and that you love not your life until your death. In other words, it doesn't matter. It's like the same thing that Billy Graham said about two or three years ago. I'm just changing postal codes. I have all authority to walk in the kingdom of this world and when I change postal codes, I'm going straight to king, uh, the kingdom of heaven. I have resurrection life now and power because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, I'm walking in that and I'm going to preach the gospel just like that. Do you believe that? That's what we believe at resurrection life. That's, you read uh, John 11 verse 25. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life and anyone who believes in me shall not die. What does that mean? You shall not die. You shall not die. I kissed you and you didn't die. You blushed a lot. <laughs> You're blushing again. Well, I'm going to give... Anyway. <laughs> That's, an oil. That's all over the world. Oh, no, One kiss. You know, almost 50 years. And that one really... I'll tell you. That had the vapors on it. <laughs> I had, she's never blushed like that. Never. That was a good one. Okay, okay, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I am the resurrection and the life, and anybody who believes in me shall not die. Okay. Then Jesus says, with his voice, looking into your eyes, do you believe this? Mm -hmm. So, Cole, so Cole J, criticism, my opinion is only the right one. In other words, you only believe yourself. You need to believe Jesus. And L is legalism. So what's the opposite of legalism? Freedom. Freedom and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Did you know that legalism uh, wants to put the Holy Spirit in prison? Amen. It wants to put whatever doctrine it is. They, they, they only want to do it to have what man wants in that particular situation. I don't know if, it, if God wants it all, but man wants it that way. Legalism. Religious spirit. 
D, debate. What's the opposite of debate? Speaking the truth in love. Or conversations. Mm -hmm. Unity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we get along? Would you like another kiss? <laughs> Keep it going. Keep it going. Unity. They do get along very well. Yeah. So I, I, I'm just saying we're not going to debate the issue. Mm -hmm. We're going to say That's yes. Right. So yeah, not to argue mm -hmm. and not to debate. Yeah. Mm. But to come into a place of agreement. Agreement. Okay. The, with the truth. That was easy. This is now over. Everybody leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll all go home. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, I, I, oh, wait a minute. Momo just fell out of his chair in Liberia. He's laughing so hard. And so did uh, Patricia Simmons in Louisiana. I, I'm sure she just tripped over something. <laughs> Dropped her shrimp. Okay. All right. Here we go. I, I, I'm, I'm, and then the dash. What happened? What's the opposite of the dash when you turn the dash from one side to the other? Is it still what? A dash. It's still a dash. <laughs> it, you know, it's a, it's a common denominator here. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. You know, so so when we when we had the opposite of the cold J, all the bad things, you know, in regards to the bad spirit, and then we 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 said we wanted all the right things of the opposites, right? Mm -hmm. Of the opposite of criticism is what? The love, the unconditional love, the blessing, the blessing and that mm -hmm. type of thing. So what's the opposite of judgment? If all these things C O L D dash all lead to a judgment, either judging, who's judging, judging. So if all these good things of the spirit of truth dash lead to what as a J, what do you think that is? Acceptance. Would be that would be my first word, acceptance. What do you got on the top of your head? I've got a hat. <laughs> what does it say? It says, I love Jesus. Can we, can we just show everybody that right now? Because that's what it is. <clears throat> when everything is right in the spirit of truth, the dash always, it's all about Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I love Jesus and Jesus. How can you, perfect love casts out fear. Jesus is that perfect love that casts out fear, that brings faith, that, you know, that brings faith, that brings belief, that brings receiving, that brings life, that brings all those things. <laughs> I love Jesus. That's the formula. That's, that's you know, the cold J when I gave you on the bad side, but when I was giving you the opposite of it, the answer dash J is Jesus every time. Amen. You can't take Jesus out of the equation. That's right. Amen. You can't take Jesus out of the conversation. You can't sp speak in any other language but in the language of the Son. Hebrews chapter one verses one and two. The language, and if you're speaking in any, any other language than that, possibly you've got a spirit of error. Possibly you're in the tree of good and evil and knowledge because you're not in the tree of life. Possibly you are in a, in, in a false doctrine. Possibly you're listening to a false teacher. Possibly you're in, in, into some... What do you call that stuff when you walk around in a barnyard? <laughs> With no shoes on? Well, politely, politely, Scripture says dung. Okay, all right, so... If you're in it, get out of it. <laughs> All right. So we are of God, and he who knows God hears us, and he who is not of God does not hear us. Does that, does, is that happening today? He who is not of God doesn't. So do you think there's going to be a separation between the sheep and the goats? Do you think there's going to be a separation in, in regards to the remnant of the sons and daughters of the Most High who are so un hungry, on fire for the Holy Spirit to those people that don't want to have anything to do with the Holy Spirit? Amen. Do you think there's going to be a separation? There is. <laughs> it's happening. Do you think those people who are operating only in fear and not in faith, do you think there's a separation? Who say that they're Christians, but they can't control the fear? Yeah. Well, where, where is their faith? It, what, what, what kind of substance? Hebrews 11.1. 1, faith is the substance hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. Well, if you're walking in fear that is not seen... Where is your faith? Mm -hmm. 
Please, please put your faith in Jesus. Faith, believing, and receiving, and walking Yeshua HaMashiach in the blood. And it says, by this we know the Spirit. It says, by this we know the Spirit. What does it say in, in the Passion there, verse 6? By this we know the Spirit of truth. It says, but we belong to God, and whoever truly knows God listens to us. Those who refuse to listen to us do not belong to God. That is how we can know the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. Can you say that in any other language? <laughs> that last line. Mm. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. But you said, okay. De deceit, deception. Um, so error. There's, I'm sorry? Error. Error, yeah. So yeah. But those so, who refuse to listen to us do not belong to God doesn't mean that we always say the right things. It does if we are speaking the language of the Son. Mm -hmm. But we belong to God, and whoever truly knows God listens to us. I got you. So I'm just saying, if you're operating in the spirit of truth, mm -hmm. can you be deceived based on what you just said there? Mm -hmm. No, you should not be. Explain that. I'll let you do that. No, no, just keep on going. Explain that. I, I, people want to know, if I'm walking in the spirit of truth, you mean that I cannot be deceived? Why? Because, is it because of my kiss? <laughs> do you want another one? It's because truth is truth, and therefore there's no room for error. Amen. And there's no room for equivocation, which is a half-truth. Yeah, no. So that, like, where there is truth, then there is not the lie. The lie is, is in that deception. Is deceit, mm -hmm. deception, lies. In that deception. And, the, and believing the lie of the enemy oh. or the or the the language of this world can cause us to step away from what the truth is. Mm -hmm. But if we stay stuck in the truth and lining ourselves up with the word of God and truth, then we will not be deceived. Mm -hmm. Can you be deceived? based on any deception from a kiss. Can you explain to me how you would find that there would be deception of a kiss? I want you to... Not about me. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> now, now, when, when it was uh, Judas, he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Ah, so the the intent behind the heart of a kiss of worship mm -hmm. or a kiss of deception is the deceit mm -hmm. of the spirit of error that can place itself mm -hmm. in anything, including worship mm -hmm. or the or heart of whatever. The, in the heart of the person. Well, I, I'm just saying the heart of the mind. person yeah. because it, the person may not even know that they're operating in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly because they will manipulate other people to get what they want. And they may use a kiss to get or sex or whatever else to get something else from somebody. Is that what you did? No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, saying, <laughs> I'm just saying that because... That's a good question. <laughs> it really is. That is a really good question. It really is. And you're well, blushing down there too. What was his motivation, right? Well, exactly. My motivation, my motivation uh -huh. was to give her an honorable, beautiful kiss. Mm -hmm. And she received it. What, just now you mean? Just, no, before. Yeah. It just came to me. It just came to me. <laughs> Get the, go ahead. That's you got her right. video? Because, uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's all right. You go for it. Uh, it was just because uh, Judas kissed Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And he betrayed him. Yes. And so, and I, I know you didn't mean it that way. I know. But. Right. It can happen. Yes. That, mm -hmm. that one person can. Can politicians do it? Yes, and they do it all the time. Yeah. I'm just saying it's the intent of the heart. Yeah, right. You know, but it just it just came to me. Like I mean, <laughs> well, that's that's well, a, yeah, but that's a that's people point. are going to understand that. Yeah, I just sometimes uh, I, I don't very often say something, but when I do say something, and I'm thinking, and I think, okay, mm -hmm. or is it just to you know to take and get what he wanted? Right. You know, like it happens right. a lot. Yes. And it happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Where people will manipulate different things through the senses mm -hmm. to get I mean, what they I want. I didn't mean anything bad about it. But no, it's just that, no, that but to me, it mm -hmm. just, 
like when I thought about it, like I thought about this Judas kid, kiss Jesus, and he betrayed him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to be part of the disciples. Right. Mm -hmm. And so why why did he do that? That's the that part that has always bothered me. You know, why did he go and do that? You know. Yeah. Well. And yeah. and what was it? It was for foolish gain. For yes. The, for right. Yes. Yeah. For so, filthy lucre. For yes. Yeah. What what will people do for show? Oh. And then Anything. there's that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is good. I'm, we're going to wrap. I know we're going to wrap it up. Turn me, you'll turn me off. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ralph, you're on. So you have something to say? <laughs> you, okay. Are you, are you, am I on? You're on. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> Except when you're off. But. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think you're getting this in regards to the spirit of error, the spirit of truth, what uh, Cain and Abel, Abel went through, what, how that spirit of error and evil that happened, that Cain got marked, and then there was the spirit, uh, that wandering spirit, that, uh, that vagabond spirit that just wants to destroy everything mm -hmm. and just bring anarchy and chaos. That's what's happening right now in many places, anarchy and chaos. And we talked about how deceit, and that was based on verse 6. It says, I, I, if, if you can read it one more time, it says that by this we will know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. But out of, out of the passion, it, it talks about the deceit mm -hmm. and the difference. And that's important for us to know right now, to have discernment. So, yeah, so the, um, the we belong to God and whoever truly knows God listens to us. So that is how we can know the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. Amen. Spirit of deceit. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's all about the spirits. Like one, you know, one spirit is opposite the other. Okay. There's truth. There's mm -hmm. deceit. There's truth. There's error. There's truth. There's deception. Okay, and that's and that's this whole thing that we wanting to focus about the Holy Spirit. So who are you going to call? <laughs> are you going to call on the Holy Spirit, or are you going to call on the world, mm -hmm. or? Mm -hmm. Th that's the, this whole team. Who are you going to call on? And whose voice are you going to listen to? Amen. Matthew 24, 24. If you can read that. It says, it says, even the elect will be deceived if it were possible. Mm -hmm. Let's go, just, just look at that for a sec. Because, you know, you think you're elect? You, you think, you, you, from, are you from the tree of good and evil and knowledge that you know so much that you cannot be deceived? It has nothing about your knowledge. It's about your heart. Amen. Okay, let's read. Okay. And that's about the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, I'm going to even start verse 23. And, and this is, again, this is uh, Jesus talking. It says, And you will hear reports from some saying, Look, he has returned. The Messiah is over here. Or the Messiah is over there. Don't believe it. For there will be imposters falsely claiming to be God's anointed one. And false prophets will rise to perform miracle signs to lead astray, if possible, those God has chosen to mm. be his. Mm. If it were possible. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about deceit in there? Yeah. Well, Deception? To be led astray. That would be deceiving. Um, who's going to lead who astray? Well, it could be false prophets. It could be imposters. Um, that falsely claim to be God's anointed, according to this. Um, if someone says to you, look, the anointed one has returned, he's in the desert, don't go chasing after him. Or if, you, if they say to you, look, he's here in our house, don't believe it. The appearing of the Son of Man will burst forth with the brightness of a lightning strike that shines from one end of the sky to the other, illuminating mm -hmm. the earth. Like you can't miss it. <laughs> how, do, how do birds of prey know where the dead body is? They just know instinctively, and so you will know when I appear. You will know instinctively. Amen. Okay, so that you know, coming back to the know, that you know him and the power of his resurrection mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that's the Holy Spirit. That's who you have to call. That, that's who you have to be in, in worshiping in spirit and truth because the Holy Spirit wants to join with you mm -hmm. totally. Are you with Total, mm -hmm. and, and so does the Father, and so does Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's like a three-cord rope, and you're the fourth, and they wrap around you, and, and it's a lifestyle. Worship is a lifestyle. Lifestyle, mm -hmm. worship. 
deception is only going to come if you do not have a strong relationship in regards to the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will be deceived by yourself, mm -hmm. by a spirit of error, and it'll lead you off. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. But you can you can reset the compass all the time and saying, okay, I haven't sinned. Oh, my thought pattern, every thought being held captive according to the obedience of Christ. So th this is where we're going to end. This is where I wanted to end. Uh, I'm sorry we've gone a little bit here. But in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, this is a spiritual warfare thing. This is where you need to take your sword out. This is where you need to be uh, active. Uh, you know, it's, it talks about the DNA of God. The divine nature activated inside you, but actualized, the actualization comes through the fire of the Holy Spirit and the Ruach HaKadosh. In other words, um, you can't do this yourself. It's got to be through the, uh, the unity of yourself and the Holy Spirit. So, in spiritual warfare, it, it talks about, now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and the gentleness of Christ. He said, I'm pleading with you. I don't know what you got in verse, what do you got in verse one? It's, it, it says here. And somewhere else right now. Huh? It's, uh, he, but the apostle Paul is, I am pleading with you. Mm -hmm. Have you got anything, anything different, Maria? Beseech. Beseech. Yeah. Beseech. I'm really empowered pleading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's please, good. please, please listen. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you hear this right now in this in this lockdown, COVID nineteen, mm -hmm. and all the civil war and civil things that are happening? I'm, I said civil war, but uh, there's civil activities that it's almost like civil war that are happening right now between prejudice and mm -hmm. all kinds of different things. But Apostle Paul is beseeching you; he's pleading with you. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. inside you is pleading with you. Mm -hmm. Do not enter into that spirit of error. Hmm. Stay into the spirit of truth. Do not get into a critical spirit. Do not get into your own opinions. Do not get into legalism. Do not get into any kind of debate. And do not get into judgment. But stay in Jesus. Hmm. Okay? So I'm pleading with you. By the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Who in presence, who in presence am lonely among you. But being absent and bold toward you. What am I missing here? Who in presence? Paul. Paul, Paul is saying, Who in presence? In, when I am uh, present with you, you, you regard me as lowly, not anything. You're, that's the way I come across, mm -hmm. or you're receiving me mm -hmm. as not very significant. But and he's saying, but uh, he's comparing the two, and he's saying right now, like I'm in being absent right now. I'm being very bold towards you. Okay. Uh, so in other words, he's trying to take his flesh out hmm. and allow the Holy Spirit to be bold to come through. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. In other words, in my presence, I, I want to. I, I I don't want. I don't want you to know that I'm the most learned person in the world. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to know I'm this great apostle. I'm this great or, or orator or whatever. But I just want you to listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not not the gift, not who I am or what God's gifted, but listen to the voice of God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Intercession's hitting Ralph right now. That's good. Listen to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And he's saying... Um, being absent and bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if I walked according to the flesh. In other words, he's, he's trying to cut out every, everything that is in regards to his flesh. Anything that he, he doesn't want to walk in a spirit of error. He doesn't want to have any of that. Does that make sense? What have you got there? Just I, I'm going to divert to someone else because I've got something else for okay. the end here. So, who can read verse 2 there? Chapter 8. 2 Corinthians 10. And we're reading from 1 to, uh, 1 to, 1 to 6. Verse 2. And it says that I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be. But I, I, I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. In other words, he wants to, 
he's, he's trying to make a stand here, but he doesn't want to do it in his flesh. Is that, is that what you get? Yeah, and then also, I think it's a warning for us, because we look at the ones, like, further out is, we can be deceived by, you know, signs and wonders. So, even though Paul had signs and wonders that followed, mm -hmm. he didn't want anybody to put him on a pedestal or to idolize him. And yet, in our modern day Right. Western world, right. that often happens. Too we much. See, yeah, mm -hmm. people speaking bold. I'm this. I'm that. Or and then begin to create. And mm -hmm. so many people begin to follow and repeat what they're saying. Right. So Paul said, "I come to you with much stuttering." And how many of us would go and listen to a speaker that stuttered? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's so it's we don't we shouldn't be looking at the outward flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we can get into error. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, that's excellent. And putting people on, we talked about that earlier, putting yeah, people on a pedestal. Yeah. Um, okay, okay, now this is where this is where the chutzpah happens here. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our war warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. In other words, you don't go punch the guy in the head. Mm -hmm. And th figure that uh, that's going to solve the problem in regards to the, the spiritual problem. That's that's mm -hmm. that's the same spirit of error. You're mm -hmm. operating in the same spirit that he, he's operating in. Mm -hmm. But you, it's a strong, pulling down of strongholds mm -hmm. to take out that principality. Number five, okay? This is the key verse. This is the key verse. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity according to the obedience of Christ. That cold J formula cannot stand if you're using 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. It takes out the criticism, the opinion, the legalism, the debate, and the judgment. You have to be in Jesus. You have to be in the right spirit. You have to be... Uh, every. It, it, it exalts... It, you know, Casting down every argument. Do, 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 what, do you, what, what do you have in verse three, 5? Anybody? Verse, yeah. Uh, chapter 10, verse 5. Oh, 5. Inasmuch as we refute the arguments and queries and reasoning and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ the Messiah, one. Again, everything going back, dash, anointed one, mm -hmm. Jesus. <clears throat> There's too much opinions going on right now in the United States and Canada and around the world. You know, everybody's, a, everybody's got an opinion and, and it causes division. And how much is being weighted against the knowledge of God? Mm -hmm. Have they consulted God? Have, is there anybody, you know, a few probably have. Mm -hmm. But do you think there has to be a, ma a majority here consulting God in regard to these arguments mm -hmm. about your opinions? Aren't arguments, opinions, positions of place? What is your position of place? What is your argument that you're arguing with God about? Or somebody else. God is saying, no. Quit arguing. Quit being in contempt. Mm -hmm. Contempt to who? Well, are you being in contempt to me? Because I want to hear your voice. I want you to speak to me. I want you to spend time with me. I want you to dwell in my, with me. <clears throat> in verse 6 says, And being ready to, to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Like six is a tough one. Mm -hmm. It's a real tough one. Do you think our God is going to be doing anything to do in regarding to punishing disobedience? Or is he going to reward obedience? Oh, absolutely reward obedience. 
Absolutely. So if there's a separation between obedience and disobedience, the spirit of error, the spirit of truth, the sheep, the goats, those who are totally immersed in the Holy Spirit, in the in the remnant of God, in the Holy Spirit, and those who don't want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, do you think between the deception and the spirit of error, there might be some truth and uh, and those who are walking in obedience? Amen. It, it, it's impossible to please God. With what? Without faith. Mm -hmm. But here, is it not talking about like, okay, so in verse 4, the weapons of war that we're fighting are not of this world, but are powered by God. <coughs> so the weapons that we fight with are powered by God. They're effective. These weapons are effective at tearing down the strong mm -hmm. strongholds erected against his truth. We are demolishing, and again, it's through his weapons, yep. the weapons of war. We are demolishing arguments and ideas, every high and mighty philosophy that pits itself against the knowledge of the one true God. We, because of, with the weapons of, of God's weapons, are taking prisoners of every thought, every emotion, and subduing them into obedience to the anointed one. So it's taking, it's not about disobedience is as soon as we choose to obey taking these thoughts captive and we're using his weapons of war, then we stand ready to punish every act of disobedience within ourselves, mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. our own thinking. Mm. So it's not about, in the way I would read that, it's not about... Well, everything is, is, is truthful, both natural, spiritual, mm -hmm. and physical. So all these his things are happening right now in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we have awesome balance in our own thinking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay right? yes yeah. that's what's causing all this uh, criticism and critical spirit around the world and, and conf confrontation mm -hmm. what's that well i have kind of an illustration that just came to mind and okay and it, the other day rebecca king had a video yeah and so she was you know prophesying and talking things and so i thought oh i'm listening about my coffee mm. so all of a sudden she goes maria i want to speak mm. to you and she said wow she saw a feather stirring the coffee, and she said huh. that we be careful what you feed on. Mm. And so it kind of mm. brought this illustration that, you know, if we be careful what we feed on, yeah. because then that becomes a thought. Mm. Right. So even before we take it captive, we're going to be careful yes. what we put in. So the ah, illustration was, okay. um, mm. you know, when I first came with Ralph, after, you know, after kind of, my own lockdown quarantine, mm -hmm. right? Right. He had his son in the back of the car. Oh, uh, yes. So I turned around to shake his hand. Right. Which, you know, was just an automatic thing to do. Right. But because this message for weeks has been, uh, you don't shake hands, you don't... Uh -huh. All of a sudden, this thought came up, oh, i got to disinfect my hands. Mm. And I had, you know, wipes in there because when you go shopping. And I had to fight that action to go wash my hands. I'm thinking, where did that thought come from? Right, okay. And it's because you, I was feeding, and you know, yes. even in the store, that was having the same message yes, through yes, the, yes. Know, the PA system. So, right. you know, feeding on that thought, it became a part of me that I didn't realize till all of a sudden, wow. you know, I went to shake his hand, which was, a, you know, what you would normally do when you yes. greet somebody and you want to acknowledge them. Yes. And I'm thinking, where did this thought from. Interesting. Yeah. So it wasn't my thought. Yeah, exactly. But I've been feeding off something mm -hmm. yeah. that became right. So right. Yeah, that's right. And that's, that's what we feed on with the worship. That you're we're right. Talking about. Yeah. 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 In First John chapter four and verse four and five, it talked good. about that. We're mm -hmm. listening to the world, right. and uh, you know, and keeping like when I started this off, I said keeping every thought captive according to the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. But if we're walking in the obedience of the law of this world or the obedience yeah, yeah, of the right. way the world is speaking and we're listening yeah. to we are not going to get it. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to wander off a few degrees. But it programs us. Exactly. That's, 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 that's what's it. happening. That's, that's exactly yeah. right. That's what's happening. Mind control. Yes. And they're doing it one little bit at a time. Kaizen. Mm -hmm. They're doing it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, yeah, and right. we don't even see the shift. We don't even see the change because they're, they're conditioning us. Mm -hmm. yep. So the, so I'm going to end with this scripture. I, we've been, this has been an excellent round table uh, discussion going into a square hole. I know a fellow's 
Simmons in Louisiana is just a laughing. Yeah, you're pounding that round peg into a square hole right now with all what you're teaching tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. So first, first Samuel 15. This is where, this is the power scripture that I wanted to end on in, in verse 20. Uh, it, it, it talks about, I'll pick this up on Saturday. But in verse 22, it talks, it, Samuel is saying, has the, Lord, has the Lord as a great delight in birth offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. In other words, uh, Samuel is talking to uh, King Saul, who's created a, a great, uh, he, he's sinned against God right here, okay? He's, he's, he's done everything wrong. And uh, I'm not saying a lot of things are being all done wrong right now, but there's a lot of things that are in the spirit of error right now. And the King Saul was in a spirit of error, really bad. He he brought back the King of Agag, mm -hmm. and he was supposed to take care of him out. He wasn't supposed to parade his trophies back in mm -hmm. to the sanctuary. And he wanted, he wanted the glory. Mm -hmm. He wanted the glory. Uh, so, that's why that's why Samuel, the prophet, the first prophet, he says, has the Lord as a great delight in birth offerings and sacrifices. In other words, what you're doing here is 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 not unto the Lord. You're doing it unto yourself. Mm -hmm. And then he says, as in obeying the voice of God, are are we obeying the voice of God? Are, do we know the voice of God? Do we know, as it says in Hebrews one verse one and two, that the Abba Father is speaking the, the the language of the voice of the son. Right now we're in 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 pay 5780 this next 10 years and and, and it's it's called we're in the time of the voice of God speaking his voice mm -hmm. through us. That's pay, mm -hmm. okay? His voice is being speaking spoken through us and he wants to speak through his sons and daughters mm -hmm. who are growing into maturity, not children who are going to who, who are not understanding. But it says it, it, obeying the voice of God, behold, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. Amen. Mm -hmm. It is better to obey the voice of God than position yourself and sacrifice and comprom compromise yourself to the kingdom of this world. Amen. And do the things of the kingdom of this world and sacrifice yourself and saying, I'm doing it for humanity. No. You've got to boy, obey the voice of God. And unto the glory of God. Does, does that make sense? We're talking obedience. It's better to, obedience is greater than sacrifice. There's so much sacrifice going on right now among the world, among different things. And I, I understand everybody's trying to correct this problem. There's a big problem. There's all kinds of arguments. There's all kinds of contention, all kinds of criticism. There's all kinds of cold J formula happening in many provinces, states, and around the world. Around the world. And nobody can come up with the solution. But we, are we listening to the voice of God? Amen. Are we being obedient to his voice? Or are we listening to the sacrifice of humanity? Mm -hmm. So... As we, as the Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you, and the Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you that you come to a place of great discernment to know the difference between the spirit of error and the spirit of truth, not only in your cell, but in your house. Mm -hmm. That's where it needs to start. Clean up your own house. And speak the voice of God. Speak in the language of the Son. Hebrews 1 verses 1 and 2. Speak in the language of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and power and authority. Mm -hmm. And let the countenance and the fire of the Holy Spirit within you shine upon your face when you wake up every morning so that you're in a place in peace. God is in the house in peace in you, that you're in peace and you're not in contention. Amen. You're in a place of contentment of who you are as a son and daughter of the Most High. Amen. Leslie's going to have a closing word, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could kiss her one more time. But... More. Well, yeah. So, the, um, like to really to sum it all up and for us to sort of do a, a quick evaluation, heart evaluation, heart, mind, thought evaluation, um, this is uh, from Prayers on Fire. And 
this the title on this one is the lie and it's taken from you know psalm 50 verse 21 and and it, it says here all this you have done and i kept silent so you thought that i was just like you sanctioning evil and that's from psalm 50 verse 21 as i said and that's passion translation so the then the devotional side of this says lord i long to eat from the tree of life for too long i indulged in things that contain no nourishment following the paths that other coaxed me others coaxed me down only led me away from you i hid behind a mask of holiness but my heart was far from you i lived to please others instead of you I was guilty of religion's greatest evil. Forgive me for sinning against you. I believed a lie. Mm -hmm. See, this is where we can each take stock. And this would be the time to, to let truth speak and really examine what's the truth of me. Is there truth that I need to, to own up to, that I need to face? Mm -hmm. And then... Come before the Lord. So, you know, like following the paths of others that coaxed me down only that coaxed me down only led me away from you. Are there the paths of others? Are the 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 language of this world that has coaxed you down a different path that's led away from the Lord God Almighty? And maybe, you know, you had that really close relationship with him at one time, but has that gotten a bit colder and colder and colder? For the word tells us that in the last days, our you know, hearts will wax cold. And is that because we've strayed away from eating from the tree of life? Mm -hmm. We've been gnawing away on that tree of good and evil. I've indulged in things. I've listened to things that have contained no nourishment. Mm -hmm. I've lived to please others, maybe or to please myself instead of you. Is that, you know, if that speaks to you. I was guilty of religion's greatest evil. Trusting in religion instead of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Forgive me, so we can say, forgive me, Lord, for sinning against you. I believe the lie. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your conviction, which fell upon my heart. In your rich mercy, you revealed the truth that set me free. May I never live like a Pharisee again. <clears throat> that religious stinking spirit <clears throat> that would condemn, would criticize, would have an opinion, would want to debate and, to, and pass judgment. May I never live like a Pharisee again. I would rather have depth of spirit than to stand tall and proud for all the world to see. The applause of others is nothing if I have lost sight of you. Purify my motives continually. Keep me free from a people-pleasing spirit. I want to carry the sound of love, so I will never be confused with the noise of a clanging cymbal. I devote myself to you, Lord, to live for you and for no one else. And I just speak that as being our prayer for the night in Jesus' name. God bless you, and amen. amen. See you Saturday.